Hey there, welcome to the first Windcast. My name is Yoyo from Offbeat Music and I want to give you some first impressions of the new library produced by Mr. Chris Hine. The Chris Hine wins, so stay tuned. Chris Hine Winds is a collection of 13 orchestral woodwind instruments. Chris teamed up with musicians from the VDA Symphony Orchestra and recorded insane amounts of samples for every instrument. The library has some unique uh, programming features, far too many to cover in one video, but um, we have to start somewhere. So let's go. The library can be purchased in different versions if you want so. The all-in bundle is called Chris Hine Winds Complete. If you are interested in certain groups of instruments only, you can choose between four different volumes. Volume 1 features the flutes, one piccolo, two different C flutes as well as an alto flute. Volume 2 the clarinets. It contains one clarinet in E flat, one in B flat and of course the beautiful bass clarinet. With Volume 3 you get the oboe 1, one oboe d'amore and the English horn. And finally, Volume 4 contains two different bassoons, along with a contrabassoon for the low end. And finally, uh, you can also buy each one of these instruments separately as single download instruments. Now that you know which instruments it contains, I want to show you some of the basic features of the library. This will be just a quick overview, but we will dive deeper into certain functions on forthcoming videos, of course. So let's load up some patches and stroll around a bit. It loads in the basic view, which shows the current key switch assignments as well as some infos about the last notes played. On the right side you see two sections, body and room. These are two independent convolution engines. Body provides early reflection samples to give the instrument depth. You can use them to virtually put the instrument on a stage, so to say. That topic of uh, staging dry samples or putting them into a room in a three-dimensional way is cru crucial for achieving uh, realistic results and a topic very often discussed in boards. Um, this body convolution engine is a great time saver when you want to do this and I certainly will go deeper into this one in one of the next videos. Room, on the other hand, contains reverb tails of different spaces. When I switched the uh, convolution engines off, you heard that Chris decided to record the instruments very dry, with basically no room information in the samples. This is done for a variety of reasons. Um, one is that he wanted to capture as much detail as possible. The other one is, this way you are not tied to the sound of a specific room or recording stage. You can go tailor your performances from small and intimate, very close, uh, up to epic ensemble writing. Let's move on into the engine room of Chris Hine Winds, the articulation preset page. Here you can configure which articulation is assigned to which key. Pretty self-explaining, I would think. The articulation list contains uh, regular sustains, sustain samples with vibrato, Two different styles named Dynamic Expression, very lively played, uh, definitely check them out for phrases in which you would normally go for the regular sustain samples. There is a flutter tongue articulation as well. And we have six short articulations with different length. The special articulations on the far right contains trillers and runs and some more specials that differ from instrument to instrument. The flute has, for example, pral trillers, while the oboe features some falls, for example. You can find a complete listing of all available articulations on Chris' website. Um, the articulations down below can be assigned to so-called hotkeys, uh, the keys colored in red down here. These work like trigger switches uh, for these effects. Mm -hmm. 
you see that as soon as you play the next note, the engine switches back to the articulation set before. Now let's have a quick look at the dynamic modes. There is four of them. Keyboard simply uses the velocity data of your keyboard to access the appropriate dynamic layers. Xfade uses a continuous controller, like for example the mod wheel or fader box or your tablet to blend between the different levels. Um, pretty straightforward and very well known from lots of libraries. The third mode is a combination of mode 1 and 2. The sound is controlled by velocity, but these values can be altered via MIDI controllers. Now I move the mod wheel, as you can see down here. As soon as the controller data hits the velocity value of the node, it starts working and changing the sound. This somehow became my favorite mode when playing these instruments. It just feels very natural. Mode number four uses a curve to shape expression. You can draw something like a, a sforzando, for example, or give your notes that little extra punch at the beginning. This mode is very versatile and um, experimenting is great fun. As you heard in all these examples, the blending between the dynamic layers is absolutely smooth and free of artifacts. There is no phasing or chorusing effect, which often is a problem with sampled solo instruments. This is because this library uses a technique called phase-aligned samples. Uh, well, a, a lot of research went into this, and if you want to dig deeper, there's a video on, somewhere on Chris' website uh, explaining the science behind phase-aligned samples. All I can say is that this technology works perfectly well, even with more complex samples like Trillers or the Flutter Tongue, for example. Okay, that should do it for the first part of our Chris Hein Wins walk around video. Watch out for the next one, which will feature more exciting stuff, of course. Thanks for watching this one and um, be seeing you.